Sergeant Burks, well done. Everyone please carry on and remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor to introduce today Dr. Jill Biden, who will be joined on stage by her husband, Vice President Joe Biden. Please give them a warm welcome as a token of our appreciation for their tireless efforts to bring awareness to the sacrifices made by military families all around the world. Ma'am, the floor is yours.
this job for a while, and uh, you know, everywhere I go, I see warriors like all of you before me, and, and behind me here, excuse my back, folks. I've uh, been in and out of uh, uh, the Balkans uh, 25 times, in and out of Iraq 26 times, in and out of Afghanistan uh, about 10 or 12 times, and I, I have no regret every time I'm with you all. I mean this sincerely. Is the folks back home uh, can't see it, can't see it in place. Don't get to fly the mission with you. Don't understand. They appreciate, they don't fully understand the incredible sacrifices you make for our country. And I want you to know, notwithstanding what you may hear about me, I have incredibly good judgment. One, I married Jill. And two, I appointed Johnson to the Academy. I just want you to know that. Clap for that, Man, you are a dog Must be slow here, man. Oh. You know, I, uh, look, um, in full disclosure, uh, Lieutenant Johnson, uh, she came to see me in 2008 and uh, appointed her in my back in the day to the Senate. Now the great privilege of nominating her to the Air Force Academy, and I'm so proud to see how her career has advanced. I also want to thank, uh, uh, thank very much Brigadier, Brigadier General Orca, me, Orca uh, for welcoming me and my family here today. And uh, we know you all, the staff off there is pretty high, and uh, you've got better things to do than come and see Jill and me, but uh, we never, uh, we never pass up an opportunity wherever we are around the world to try to see our, see our warriors. You know, uh, I understand this is primarily an Air Force crowd, and uh, I also know there's some other folks here, Army, two Navy, Marines, members of, uh, of uh, our coalition partners, and uh, I also hear they're members of the, uh, the Delaware National Guard. Are there any Delaware National Guard out there in the audience? Well, uh, we're, we're a mile of crowd. We, uh, our son, his guard, uh, uh, spent a year in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, uh, was very proud of his service. Uh, said it was the most proud thing he ever done. He was the Attorney General of the State of Delaware, but he uh, was a boy for a year with his team. And, uh, and it's good to see all of you. I'm sure this is easy to be here to, to compliment you as well. On behalf of my family and from President Obama to the American people, we basically came to say thank you. You know, uh, you're part of the greatest generation of warriors the world has ever seen, and that is not hyperbole. Whether or not I've seen you in uh, Baghdad or Basra or Kabul or Kandahar or in Sarajevo or in, uh, in parts of uh, parts of those mountains where we've got all the parts of of Bosnia, you are you're an amazing group of people. Um, you know, uh, you've been part of an unbroken chain, an unbroken chain of patriots that uh, sets us back throughout our entire nation's history. You know, most uh, people uh, call the men and women who fought my father's generation in World War II the greatest generation, and they were. But as I've said many times before, and I mean this sincerely, I've been saying for the last 10 years, I think uh, the 9-11 generation is the greatest generation of warriors we've ever produced, the greatest generation and the most competent warrior the world has ever seen. That's not hyperbole. Never has so much been asked, never has so much been given, never has there been an exception. Many of you have deployed one, two, three, five times, and you've taken the fight from Afghanistan uh, to Iraq and to Syria, and you've done it in a way that has made us extremely proud. You know, uh, you're taking the fight to Dash now, and uh, pursuing all those who would, uh, who would do harm to America. You're the linchpin of a strategy to reclaim territory that they have taken and destroy the financial assets. We have to squeeze the heart of Daesh in Iraq and Syria, 
so they can't continue to pump their poison into the region and the rest of the world. And that's what we're doing with our coalition partners. We're doing that fighter and leaders, harder than ever. We're making it harder for them to maneuver. We're cutting off their lifeline, their oil revenues, and their finances. And in this effort, our coalition partners have been absolutely vital. And I want to particularly recognize the way in which the UAE has stepped up and expanded their role in this campaign. These are partnerships that are built and nurtured right here on this base. You capture the images that provide us with the intelligence we need to target the enemy and protect our forces. You control the skies over Iraq and Syria. Matter of fact, you all control the skies of the whole damn world. And you can clap your hands. Just since October, when you arrived, many of you, you made over 1,800 dynamic strikes, including strikes that destroyed millions upon millions of dollars of cash that Dash would have used to continue to perper perpetrate their campaign of terror and barbarism around the world. That's how you fly, that's how we win. And as we pursue their finances, that is also losing support. They're slashing their own salary. Morale is low. Defections and dash are way up. And when they try to make up the difference by extorting money from occupied communities, more and more people see dash for who they are, criminals and cowards. This fight's going to take time, but we're committed to seeing it through until we wipe out this evil, and we will wipe out this evil, period. No commas, period. And that means we have to destroy them on the battlefield as well as defeat their twisted ideology that inspires people to violence. It won't be easy. We're asking a lot of you and of your family. I know you've been going at breakneck speed. The job temp here has been sustained, and you've sustained an incredible workload. And you're away from your family, your loved ones, for long periods of time, tour after tour. Senior Airman Stevens here, launches aircraft every day to support our mission in the region. He's been recognized twice as your warrior of the week. And when he scheduled to the home last September, he volunteered to extend his tour and to continue to serve like so many of the rest of you. Weapon Systems Officer, and I'm not allowed to use the name, Major Swat here, I was told that, uh, I should call her that, has surpassed 1,000 combat hours last month. 1,000 hours over the skies of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria. That's an incredible achievement. And it's not easy, but it's absolutely indicative of the commitment each and every one of you has made to serve our country. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do to keep our country safe. Thank you for the sacrifices you've made. Thank you for being who you are. But equally important, I want to thank your family. It's hard, hard out here on deployment. They miss you so much. The birthday celebrations, the holidays, the daily touching, the family and friendship, the status. The English poet named John Milton said, those also serve who only stand and wait. To the press here, give a round of applause to your families, your mothers, your fathers, your wives, your husbands, who are back home.
kids are going to school, everything's normal for them. Nothing different. Mommy and Daddy aren't jumping in the cockpit, flying over enemy territory, taking out bad guys. Everything's normal, except for your child, your family. My two grandkids are with me today. My son, Major Bo Biden. And you know, when he was in Iraq for that year, he showed up at school, they showed up at school. Everything was fine, except no one had any idea their mommy, their daddy was away. It was still empty. So what Jill and Michelle have done is go around the country talking about military families. So that now, a lot of your schools where your kid shows up and you're not home, there's a picture of you outside the classroom showing you deployed. Your little son or daughter can say, that's my daddy. That's my mommy. That's what they do. I know you're not looking for any special recognition, but you deserve, and your family deserves to be recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, when Bo was deployed, the general officer, the general national guard, wife gave Jill a prayer. And Jill, every morning as he gets up, if he works hard tonight, he can teach his full time to be a college professor. I walk into the, the kitchen, the vice president's residence, and he's standing there with a cup of coffee, mouthing the prayer. When you're you away, your family member, two, three, five times a day, you cross their mind, wondering whether you're okay. We still have a whole hell of a lot of people in harm's way. We got a whole hell of a lot of people still in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we can't forget it. Every single morning, I ask my staff to put on my, my car, call the Pentagon. I want to know exactly how many fallen angels there have been in Iraq and Afghanistan every single day. Because every single one represents the entire community back home. I ask exactly how many wounded. As of today, 6,741 fallen angels have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, a debt we can never repay. 52,378, not 52,300 plus, 52,378 as of today have been wounded. And tens of thousands, which is war began, Jobs going home with unseen injuries, unobserved injuries, injured nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, we owe this generation. We owe all of you. Over 5.5 million of you have joined since 9-11. Over 5 million have said, send me Send me over 2,400,000 of you to tread on enemy territory for your country. Some of you multiple times. I firmly believe, as a nation, we have a lot of obligations. I apologize for some of you who heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. We only have one sacred obligation. Prepare to equip those we send into harm's way. Care for their families when they're gone. And keep our promises to them when they come home. First, when you're out here, we have an obligation to make sure you have every single thing you need. So folks, that's what you earn when you put on that uniform. As I said, like my son, my guess is the vast majority of you think it's the proudest thing you've ever done in your life. We lost our son a couple months ago. The proudest thing before he died, we talked about.
Thank you, Harry, Harry, Harry.